my guest is Dan Wokel, and I've been introducing you as www.cbankcapital.com, and uh, your phone number eight six six five four one nine nine five two. But you have more history than that. Who is Dan Wokel? Oh, a long what is, who is it, Dan, What is a Dan Wokel? It is my thirtieth year in the investment business. Thirtieth year. Thirtieth okay. year this year. I uh, started in 1979 as a as a wire room boy in Calgary with a company, fine old blue blood company called Pitfield Mackay Ross. Oh, Pitfield Mackay Ross. And I was uh, knew them well at one time. I started as the the wire room boy on the telex, where I would telex the orders in. The brokers would come and they'd throw their orders into the pit, and I would telex the orders to the stock exchange. And of course, when the fills were the orders were filled and they came back. I would write out the, the fills on the slips, the pink, the pink slips yeah. for sales, the blues for the buys, put them in the broker's slot. Yeah. And, uh, and, and if uh, you made a mistake, it was serious. Oh, big time, right? So everything was telex that day. No more than, you know, no screens, none of this computer business and stuff like that. But uh, I spent 20 years with, uh, well, Pitfield, Mackay, Ross, and successor companies, which became RBC Dominion Securities, where I managed offices for them primarily in Western Canada up until, well, I guess, 20 So years. you managed offices for RBC? RBC, yeah. I was the manager in Edmonton. I managed the Okanagan region for them. I managed portion, uh, portions on Vancouver Island. But I spent, yeah, most of my youthful career with RBC Dominion Securities in a management capacity, uh, starting branches. I started their offices in Lethbridge. I started them in Red Deer. I started them in Penticton. I started them. So you were an office opener. I was the office opener, and I was the I was the startup guy, and I was the hatchet man. Well, that's what I did for H and R Block. I and opened up Assiniboia, Saskatchewan, and Moose Jaw, and Regina, yeah. and Vernon, and Penticton, and yeah. well, Kelowna. You, you hired realtors and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Well, most of my career, certainly for I opened up 700 offices yeah. altogether. So I yeah. just I didn't know you were an office opener. Oh no, I opened offices. I was the guy that would go in and start an office in the city, hire the brokers, hire the trainees, get them all up and running. I don't know how many brokers I've hired over my career. Can I tell you a cute story? Because <laughs> if you did this stuff, you know all about this stuff. I was opening up Kelowna and Penticton for H and R Block, yeah. and um, I was driving a black Lincoln convertible and towing a 27-foot travel trailer. Yeah. And um, I think I had Manitoba license plates on it. And I had a fellow, I won't bother with his name, I know his name, but with Okanagan Television. And I was with H&R Block, and I had this wonderful the schedule. And this was a schedule that H&R Block, who already at that time had 12,000 offices, had decided was the way the thing would go. And the guy selling me the television advertising wanted to make sure but wanted to do a job i mean all he had to do was take the order yeah. okay because i couldn't change the order if i wanted to right. but he starts telling me that this isn't the way it should be done and he says i said no i'm sorry it's got to be this way he says you americans piss me off he says you come into our valley and you start telling us what to do and i can still remember saying to him i said well where are you from are you from here he said, no. I said, well, where were you born? He said, well, I was born in Moncton. Yeah, right. And I said, and how long have you been in Kelowna? He says, oh, three years. I said, well, I was born in Vernon, so will you just shut up and <laughs> <laughs> let us get on with business? Yeah. And he just shut up and uh, we, we, we who's remained. The, who's, who's the, who's the, who's the immigrant? Who's, who's the foreign Well, but immigrant? I was the immigrant. I had, uh, had I left in Vernon when I was two months were, old. Right. I didn't you know. know you were born in Vernon. Well, I was born in Vernon I Jubilee Hospital. Vernon, right off Calamalk Lake for well, at a gorgeous five I was acres born in Vernon there. Jubilee Hospital. I had a daughter which was born there. Really? See, see what a yeah. small world yeah. it is? Absolutely. And we don't know this unless we have thought. But, there I you could, go. but you know how the Okanagan gets a little bit insular uh, once in a while. Oh, the gophers and Yeah, once, and once you're in there, don't let anybody else in there. Remember when the Albertans used to come? When I came by, of course, it was those darn Albertans with their yellow plates, right? Yes. The yellow plates invade the place through <laughs> the course of the summer. Yeah. Um, you know, it's. Uh, well, it's 30 years. It's 30 years, David. Actually, this November, right about now, seven years ago, was the when I uh, licensed C Bank Capital. And how did November. you decide to do that? 
mean, what made you leave? I mean, I got fired by H and R Block. It was a simple decision to make. <laughs> what, now, what made you decide to? Well, I'd do be managing, and I'd be managing brokers for, gosh, almost twenty odd years. And quite frankly, um, as a manager, you know, you get away from the business of service and clients, and you've got all these salesmen on the floor. I've had offices of fifty brokers. I've had offices of two brokers. But my job was always to hire 50 them. brokers, sort of like herding cats. Oh, right? it's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, it's what us, some of us old hacks in the business, the management business, you know, you're the meat in the sandwich. Yeah. You're the ham in the sandwich because your, you know, your head office is on, on you to, you know, raise revenues. Of course, your brokers who work on commissions and yep. tail levels are always on you because they want, you know, they want a new carpet in their office, or they want a new desk, or they want this, or they want that kind of prestige issue. So you've always got the upside pressure, and of course you always get the threat, well, you know, the opposition is willing to pay me $700,000 to move over to those guys. Well, we were talking to a fellow the other day what with are a, you million do for dollars, me? a million dollars, a million dollars bonus. Yeah. So you're always as a branch manager. So anyways, I did that for 20-odd years. I managed my own book of business as well. But in, I always wanted to be a professional money manager, not a stockbroker, not an investment advisor per se, commission salesman. I always wanted to manage money. And I did, you know, after I got into the business. So in the late 80s, I decided, I mean, if you want to manage money, you have different licensing, different licensing, higher degree of, of um, fiduci fiduciary duty, David. Yeah. You know. But uh, you, I went out. I mean, and fiduciary, we're talking about just a responsibility. No, well, there is a difference in the licensing categories between a brokerage uh, a person and a, a an, an investment manager. Yeah. In terms of e the brokerage industry, basically holds their the brokers to a suitability standard. Yeah. They're not required to a fiduciary standard. Yeah. Where, uh, for example, well, as so a professional, about the professional portfolio really manager, high. yeah where you have discretionary control over a person's assets, you have a h much higher duty to them than if you were selling them something. Yeah. Right? Because you're acting for them in a discretionary capacity. Yes. Um, anyways, I decided to assault the Chartered Financial Analyst, which is a global designation, as you know, in the late 80s, and achieved it, and um, convinced uh, the powers to be at RBC Dominion Securities to allow me to practice uh, being a professional portfolio manager within the context of Dominion Securities. It was a big fight because in 1987, the crash of 1987, we had the October crash. Yeah. RBC, in those days, Dominion Securities shut down the investment management division after the crash because they just had such an unwieldy time with it. It, it was, and they just said, no more, we're not doing that. But I did convince them and they did allow me to do it. But, um, I uh, got very good at making presentations, and I was out here in BC at the time. And so I decided I'd go to every Royal Bank and convince, because we were part of the Royal yes, Bank, yes. that, you know, to get the bankers to refer me clients. Well, just the year before, they had bought Royal Trust. And Royal Trust, there was a, as there is in all these big companies, a political bun fight that Royal Trust was claiming the exclusive domain for discretionary asset management within the Royal Bank Group. Oh, I see. Okay. So the senior VP who I knew in Victoria at the time found out that I was canvassing Royal Bank branches and doing presentations in the branches as to mm -hmm. what I could offer uh, clients of the Royal Bank or our clients because I was part of the bank, banking group. So uh, the call came down from uh, the, the senior uh, person in Toronto and said, and he, who, who was my boss, and he uh, uh, it was uh, the national sales manager for mm -hmm. the retail sales group. And he says, Dan, he says, you must give a heck of a presentation. He says, you've sure got those real trust guys <laughs> <laughs> upset. <laughs> so it came down. It went to, uh, I guess, some senior level committee or whatever, and they basically came back and said, um, You can't do that anymore. You can't do that anymore because okay. we're going to go to real trust. Cause yeah. And, and, and I said, okay, if I can't do it, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And... That was the beginning. Okay, so we're going to come back and we're <laughs> going to do another story. I've been talking to Dan Walco about the formation of cbankcapital.com. And uh, I guess that's, uh, where's Richard over there? Okay. We're good for tonight? No. No. Nope. My name is...